10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stage one propulsion. Our 30th Electron has taken to the skies, having successfully lifted off the pad at Launch Complex 1. You can see the distinctive shape of the Mahia Peninsula below as the vehicle is on its way to space, carrying our 300th Rutherford engine and 150th satellite. The next critical stage in Electron's flight is Max Q, maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is when the vehicle's velocity and local air density are at their maximum and the vehicle experiences the most mechanical stress. We'll hear that call from Mission Control when Electron clears that stage of flight. Clear up next queue. Electron has successfully passed through Max-Q and at an altitude of just over 15 kilometers is well on its way to pass the Kármán line and enter orbit. The nine sea level Rutherford engines on the first stage are operating nominally and we are approaching the next series of events in the mission. The first step after Max-Q is MECO or main engine cutoff when those first nine engines throttle down before shutting off completely. This slows the vehicle marginally before the first stage separates from the vehicle. Once this is complete, the second stage space optimized Rutherford engine ignites to take the payload and kick stage the rest of the way into orbit. These three events happen in quick succession, so keep an eye out and listen in for the call from Mission Control. Nico in roughly 30 seconds. Go oh, it, Jettons. Fifteen seconds to Miko. Miko confirmed. Stage separation successful. Stage separation confirmed. Done, done, and done. With that, we've confirmed MECO, stage separation, and ignition of the space-optimized Rutherford engine on the second stage. At this point, as Electron has cleared most of Earth's atmosphere, it can also jettison the payload fairing, as it is no longer needed to protect the payload. You can see it there on your screens. Electron's fairing has now been ejected, with the two pieces falling away. Electron's second stage is continuing nominally on its way to orbit, carrying its inspective payload, which is now exposed in preparation of deployment. The vehicle is currently reaching speeds of more than 8,000 kilometers per hour and at an altitude of 131 kilometers. The vehicle is continuing nominally on its flight to low Earth orbit, currently traveling at a speed of over 9,000 kilometers per hour and an altitude of 140 kilometers. As Electron lifted off the pad, you would have seen big clouds of what looks like smoke billowing out from under the vehicle. That's actually steam, produced as the exhaust of the engines makes contact with the water deluge. We use water to absorb the immense sound energy produced by those nine Rutherford engines at liftoff. We're now almost five minutes into the mission for the OWL spreads its wings, our Electron flight for Synspective. The vehicle with payload is traveling at a speed of over 11,000 kilometers per hour, currently at an altitude of 176 kilometers, well on its way to low Earth orbit. The low Earth orbit zone, often noted as LEO, is classified by having an apogee of less than 2,000 kilometers, or approximately 1,200 miles. Next up is a step we refer to as the battery hot swap. The Rutherford is a unique engine in that it is powered by electric pumps, which draw energy from batteries. Once those batteries are depleted, they're just dead weight, so we shed them to swap out for a fresh one. If you watch carefully, you'll see that shiny silver battery separate from electrons soon. HVB battery discharge holding nominal, approaching hot swap in roughly 30 seconds. 
throttling down. You might have seen it there. Battery hot swap has been successfully completed and a new battery is powering the second stage onto orbit. Electron is currently at an altitude of 206 kilometers, traveling at a speed of over 19,000 kilometers per hour on its way to space. While this particular mission is not a recovery mission, our recovery program is progressing at speed with the first test of a recovered Rutherford engine just two weeks ago, and it was a roaring success. We're looking forward to the next 30 minute missions and beyond, perhaps even flying fully reusable hardware to improve sustainability and value for our customers. The next major milestone we're approaching is second engine cutoff, or SECO. Just like Nico, our space-optimized Rutherford engine on the second stage will throttle down ahead of separation from the kick stage, which takes the payload to exactly where it needs to go. Guidance is in total, 27 seconds remaining. Seeker confirmed.